Hi, let's talk about Excel's, Microsoft Excel's Goal Seek feature. And uh, let's get started. So um, I've set up a spreadsheet to calculate the return on investment for a would-be business investment uh, of $8,000. And we set it up so that it's a six-month investment. We're assuming we get $1,000 the first month and it's going to increase by 10% every month. So that's why these numbers are a little bit, each one's a little bit different because we're adding 10% to the previous month's uh, revenue. And then of course over here we have the total revenue which is just adding up all of these over here. Don't worry too much about how I set this spreadsheet up. The, this is just to set up uh, an example for Goal Seek. Um, and then we have the total return, or sh I should say the total revenue and the return on investment. Um, incidentally, the return on investment calculation is just going to be the uh, revenue you expect minus the investment amount divided by the investment amount. Okay, so that's how that's set up. So that's important because we want to use Goal Seek to help us figure out what's the break-even point. Uh, and break-even point for a return on investment is going to be 0%, would be exactly 0, meaning you got back exactly the amount that you invested. No less, no more. So you know if you do anything better than that, that's going to be a positive return on investment. So in this case, we're going to do a 0%. Uh, we're going to try to do a, use the Goal Seek feature to make ROI be 0%. Now remember, Goal Seek does not have to be used only for ROI. Goal Seek is used for any situation whereby you have kind of a complex formula that refers to multiple cells within the Excel worksheet that you're on. And the idea is that you want to say, what would it take in, what would it take to get a particular outcome over in this cell if we changed this other cell to something else? And so it'll be easier to, to uh, actually show you than describe it verbally. So let's, let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to go over to the data tab and then we're going to what if analysis right here click on that and then click on goal seek okay we're going to do this two different ways first we're going to figure out remember both times we're figuring out what's the zero percent roi because we're figuring that's the break-even point that's the minimum we want to get first time we're going to do it is to, to play with the expected monthly increase number um, so let's go ahead and hit goal seek and it's saying okay what do you want to set the cell well we want to set this cell this is our goal cell we want this particular cell right there to be 0%, okay? So notice I, I selected J2, then I'm putting the value at 0, and it says, okay, well, to get 0%, what cell do you want us, What, in other words, the, the software is asking you, what cell do you want it to change in order to get that 0%? Of course, you've got to choose a cell that has uh, a, a, a dependent cell on uh, for, uh, for that formula. So we'll click on that, and this time we're going to try it with the expected monthly increase number right there. And we're going to say, we're basically saying, tell me what that number needs to be over here in order to make that number zero. Okay? And let's go ahead and click OK. Now, it looks like it didn't do much, right? It just changed to an 11, but let's, let's actually hit home here and let's actually see. Uh, you can see these decimals that it went out. So it actually figured this number out. It said, basically it's telling us that the monthly increase would need to be, you know, 11.439, et cetera, et cetera, percent, uh, given an $8,000 investment and given the first month's revenue of $1,000 in order to break even, okay? So that's one way to do it. Now, let's say we, we decided we believe that the 10% increase, we're going to hold that constant, but we're going to change that first month's revenue amount. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and click Control-Z for undo. And all I'm doing right now is, is I'm undoing that because I want to go back to where it was before we did the goal seek. Okay? So that's all I've done is just kind of undid that so we could try it one other way. So the second time, like I said, we're going to leave the 10% the same, the, which is, again, that's the monthly increase that we expect. But we're going to see what would it take, what, what would be the first month's uh, return have to be given a 10% increase every month and a, given an 8% investment. Okay, so again, it's, it's reset now back to the negative 4% because that's what we just started our numbers at before we started playing with Goal Seek. So now we're doing the second one. So let's go ahead and click Data again. Click on Data Validation. Whoops, not that one. Um, what If Analysis and Goal Seek. 
So this time we're doing, again, J2, set cell J2 to zero, because again, we're looking for the minimum, so we want the break even. What would it take to give us a 0% ROI? By changing cell, this time we're gonna change this cell right here, because we're saying what would the first month have to be? Uh, and so, and we're, you know, again, assuming all these things are true. And you can see right there that the number is 1,036 and 86 cents. That's how much you'd have to start with the first month, given a 10% increase every month to get a 0% ROI. So of course you could play with this, you could do it differently. You could say, uh, what would it take to get a 10% ROI or 100% or whatever number you wanted? Um, and that's how you use Goal Seek. So watch this a couple of times if it didn't make sense the first time, and you can apply this to any spreadsheet or any worksheet whereby you have multiple cells that are referred to within a formula and you want to know if I change this cell over here what number would I have to change it to in order to make this other cell over here be a certain value. That's Goal Seek. Good luck!